Dementia can be a devastating condition. It comes on slowly, but then it can grow into a demon that devours the mind of one and destroys the lives of loved ones around. I want to give you hope for prevention and reversal of dementia. I want to give you a reason to believe and an understanding of how it can happen and a method to make it happen. There's some wisdom from the past that we can learn from. Thomas Edison once said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. I restate that as, if you build a body to prevent disease, you don't need medications to manage the disease. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said, it's far more important to know what person the disease has than what disease the person has. Or you might say that is, spend your efforts addressing the cause more than naming the disease. Hippocrates also said, that which is used develops, that which is not used wastes away. And we've all heard, use it or lose it. But we could also say, use it and regain it. Dementia is a huge public problem. In statistics from 2012 and 2015, we see that 13% of the nation is 65 years or older, spending $226 billion on dementia care. Alzheimer's makes up, people with Alzheimer's disease count in 5.3 million. That's 8% of all adults 65 years and older. By 2050, we'll see this increase dramatically, up to 20% of all 65 year and older individuals. And the expenses are significant as well. 113 billion paid by Medicare. And in the future, that will be 550 billion paid by Medicare. And those with Alzheimer's will account for 13.8 million people, 16% of those 65 years and older. So as years go by, more of our population will be older, and more of the older will have Alzheimer's. But more than a public problem, what strikes me is the personal problem. So what does this mean for you, your spouse, your grandkids? Well, caregivers are important. Three out of four said that they were somewhat or very concerned about maintaining their own health. Three out of four. So the prolonged suffering, physical and mental, is by the individual and the family. In fact, $9.7 billion in healthcare costs are due to the physical and emotional toll. Those are additional costs for care for the caregiver. I had a personal experience with this when I was young. When I was nine years old, I went to visit my grandfather who was ill. He was in a nursing home. He was taken there for I didn't know what reason. And I came to visit him, walked into his room, and said, Hey, Granddad, how you doing? He didn't know who I was. I didn't understand that. I left crying. I never saw him again. I later learned he had Alzheimer's disease. So now we have a question in this era of the brain. Can this experience change? Can we prevent or at least postpone Alzheimer's? Can we reverse dementia? There's many people working on it. There's Alzheimer's Association. There's Alzheimer's research journals. And the White House has a brain initiative. There are subspecialties focusing just on restoring brain function. I belong to those. The American Chiropractic Neurology Board and the International Association of Functional Neurology and Rehabilitation. So what if we could prevent or postpone Alzheimer's and prevent or reverse dementia? Well, let's say we could just delay Alzheimer's by five years. Now on the right hand, there's this graphic that we saw earlier in 2050. So we were looking at 
13.8 million people having Alzheimer's. So let's say we could delay that by five years, the onset of Alzheimer's. That would result in a 43% reduction in the cases of Alzheimer's. That is massive. A little change can have a big effect. So how are we making this change? Well, there's a lot of research and there's obviously a lot of um, advertising on medications. When appropriate, they seem to lower the risk of dementia. But certain medications are associated with a higher risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. When you have a powerful um, medication, it makes a change or causes the body to do something, forces the body to do something, you're often going to have a side effect and that will be very undesirable sometimes. All right, so what if we could do something more naturally, like eating and drinking, okay? Could we reduce the rate of Alzheimer's? Well, there's a particular diet called the MIND diet, and it was studied. And if you adhered that to that diet very well, there was a 53% rate reduction of Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. That's huge. And if you didn't adhere to it very well, but pretty well, there was a 35% reduction. That's huge. Okay, what about eating and drinking the timing of it? Well, intermittent fasting, there's different ways to do that. But intermittent fasting can decrease diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cholesterol. And it can increase human growth hormone by over 1,300 times in women and 2,000 times in men. These are the, this is the hormone that the movie stars get injections of to make them healthy and young and vibrant. But you can do it with intermittent fasting as well as vigorous exercise and cognitive exercises. Um, intermittent fasting also makes brain fuel a new kind and increases the formation of new nerves. What about physical exercise? That's pretty natural and done appropriately. It's very safe. So they measured people in the research study. They did mid, they measured their midlife exercise when they were about 50 years old. And then, um, and they, they said if the exercise 20 to 30 minutes, two or more times a week, it resulted in a 70% risk reduction of Alzheimer's and other dementias, 70%. And here's the key, you know about the APOE4 gene. This is the gene that if you have it, you're much more likely to have Alzheimer's. Well, it was even better for those people. The people who did not have that gene had a 60% reduction in um, risk of Alzheimer's. But the people who did have the gene had a 70% reduction. That was even better. This is great news. What? So you say, well, but I'm not 50 years old anymore. I didn't do that then. What, what do I do now? Well, there's still hope. So if you exercise 20 to 30 minutes, two or more times a week, even after a loss of some memory, a research study showed improved memory in men and women, better for women than men. What about cognitive exercise? This is thinking. That's basically what it means. Cognitive exercise is brain or mental exercise thinking. If with mid to late life mental challenges, three or more days a week, research showed 7.3 years of protection from dementia and 3.2 years even if you had the gene. What about other modifiable risk factors like sleep, stress, gastrointestinal health? Each of those have been shown to provide more protection from dementia in one way or another. What about vitamin status? If you have vitamins D status that is sufficient, just barely, you get a 54% protection from all causes of dementia. But if it's very sufficient, you have 122 to 142% protection from all causes of dementia. What about other supplements? Well, there are a lot of different vitamins and supplements and blood values. Nutritional supplements as combinations of nutrients or when combined with other health habits, which we recommend, are effective for improving memory performance even in early Alzheimer's. Now, we talked about a bunch of individual components. 
But what if you put them all together? Then what could you do to prevent or postpone Alzheimer's and reverse dementia? Well, then you get an effect that's called multi-domain. If you have multiple, multiple components put together, you get a synergistic effect, which means all those, all those pieces put together are greater than the sum of the parts. So if you add eating and drinking, physical, cognitive, sleep, stress, nutritional deficiencies, you address all those, intestinal dysbiosis, then you will get not just one plus one plus one plus one plus one, you will get a synergistic effect greater than the sum of the parts. That gives us hope. So what we do with synergy, we see this little, this little avatar, this little picture down there. Um, these multiple arms coming out or going in. This represents the multiple parts, the multiple domains that can cause a decline in our brain health. Or if we get them working correctly, get them working for us, they cause an improvement in our brain health in a synergistic way. And so we put together what are called the six synergistic steps to prevent and ver reverse dementia. We test, find out what's going on. We add good things. We avoid the bad things. We move and use your body correctly, supplement, and retest to see what's working, what do we need to change. We address what you eat, drink, breathe, think, move, and sleep. This results in improved brain function. So what should you do now? Well, get going on what you know. Get assessed for a personalized approach if you want more benefit or to know exactly what you need to do. And get assistance if you want to increase your likelihood of success as you implement these ideas. These are the six synergistic steps again and some of the details, at least in generalized form, of what we do in each of those six synergistic steps. So, how well does this program work? Well, that's been researched. So, a multi-domain approach has been shown to be highly effective, even in allowing people to recover enough brain function to return to work when they had to quit work due to losing brain function from dementia. They were able to return to work in three to six months of implementing a multi-domain synergistic approach of healing. But you say, well, I can't do all that. That's so much. Well, they address that in the research. This gives us even more hope. So even without perfect compliance to doing all these things, people still recover. Now, of course, the more you do, the more synergistic effect you're going to get, the more recovery we would expect. But even without perfect compliance, improvements were seen, significant improvements. So, I hope that I have provided you hope for prevention or postponement of Alzheimer's and reversing dementia. I want to give hope to people like I was when I was nine. My grandfather didn't know who I was. How that scene and perhaps my life would have changed if I'd walked in that room and said, Hey, Granddad, how you doing? He said, Hey, Jay, good to see you. I don't expect to be in here long. And then we had another moment, maybe another year, maybe several years where he could have invested in my life. I want to restore those years to other people's lives. So to get started or to get more information, you can give us a call. We'd love to help you out. Another great way to get started is to do your brain nourishment score online.